Hi, in this video I'm going to talk to you about how you fuse the interfacing to the sides of your Rockport carryalls. Now the Rockport carryalls come in two sizes and uh, you can use a directional print. If you look at the print that's on the table, that's a di directional print. One of the things with a directional print is you want to be sure that the pattern, the direction of the pattern, is facing up on both the outside of the bag and the inside of the bag. If you can see the flowers growing up on the inside of the bag. To do that, um, you need to actually cut two pieces and you'll notice a seam down the center of this piece. If you're using an overall print, you don't need to do this step, but for a directional print, there is an extra step to do. Now this is described in your pattern, so if you are using a directional print, read the pattern carefully. Uh, to cut for a directional print, you're going to first cut your fabric a half an inch wider than what the instructions um, say to do for an all-over print and that is in your pattern. Then you're going to cut that piece in half. Put those two pieces together. When you put those two pieces together, you want to make sure that this piece is facing up and this piece is facing up. Stitch across the top and then iron that and flip it out. Now I don't know if you can see this, but if you look here, the turtle is facing up on this side and when I fold it and flip it over your fishies are facing up on this side. So you want to have the right orientation on both the outside and the inside of the bag. So um, I'm going to talk to you now about the interfacing. We use Bozel's Inner Form Plus for this project. We're using the Inner Form Plus because it's a very um, stable product. You're fusing all your pieces together because you're going to be doing a lot of channel stitching. It stabilizes everything and it will help your bags stand up. For the medium size bag, you can use just one yard of Inner Form Plus. For the large bag, you need both one yard and a half yard. And you can buy the two separate packages. And you'll see why in a minute. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to cut your interfacing into two pieces. You're going to cut a large piece and then you're going to cut a piece half the width, but the same length as the larger piece. When we fuse, we're going to start with the larger piece first. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is your ironing surface. This is what's called a big board ironing board. I use it frequently. I've covered it with a Teflon ironing sheet but you can use parchment paper. If you're working on the bigger bag, you'll need to have a large ironing surface. It's also easier to use when you're working with the medium bag. So um, invest in a big board ironing board. If you don't have one, use a table that um, is either one of those plastic tables uh, or a table that you you don't really care about and cover it. You can purchase a large ironing pad. It will make this process so much easier. But again, even with the ironing pad, make sure you cover it with either a Teflon ironing sheet or uh, parchment paper. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to lay the interfacing on the ironing board and we're going to place our fabric on top. We want to match 
all of the edges. And then, with a hot steam iron, and I like this iron because it has a real burst of steam, we're going to iron that piece of fabric to this larger piece of interfacing. Now I'm not going to iron the whole thing, but one of the things I wanted to mention to you, if you find that you have a little uh, fold in your fabric, which you'd l want to avoid, just take your, in uh, your fabric, pull it right off of the interfacing, smooth it out, and repress. The other thing is, you do not want to stitch on this interfacing while it is still warm. You want to let it cool before you do any channel stitching. Once you've got that larger piece fused, you'll peel that off your parchment paper, and you're going to fold it in half, like this. Just press it so it's folded in half. Match your bottom raw edges. If you have pieced your uh, piece together, the seam is going to be right at the top. That seam will be covered by binding later. The next step is you're going to take that half size piece and place it right in the middle. Fold this back over. And this is, this is very important. You want to pin through your two layers of fabric and your three layers of interfacing all the way across the bottom. If you don't do that, in your next step, your pieces of interfacing will shift. So you want to pin all the way across the bottom. And I have one that's already done. Now here is the big bag. Just notice the difference in size in what you're working with so you understand why a large pressing surface is important. So the next thing after you've pinned all the way across the bottom is you want to take your steam iron once again and you want to steam press this. You'll press this all the way down And I'm not going to go all the way down, but you'll go all the way down. And then you're going to flip it over and press it one more time. If you feel that there's little bubbles here and there, turn your steam off and dry iron it. You want this nice and flat. Now you are all ready for your next step.